My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're coming in from. Okay, great. Thank you so much for having me here. Well, welcome everybody from Germany. Um, I am Vivian Dibbert. I live by my slogan, live your life, which is uh, at the same time also my mission. I work as a speaker and I work as a trainer and my focus is mindset, emotional intelligence and resilience. And I come from the business side. I was working for a huge corporation for many years as retail director. And about six years ago, I completely changed my entire life and I became a speaker, as I said, and a trainer. So I'm very happy to be able to be here today. So I got, I got a bunch of questions. Like, I'm yes. ready to fire. What does... <laughs> I feel like this was a race I had to prepare. So what does resiliency mean? Because everybody has their own um, definition or I want to say understanding. What does yes. it mean in the business world? Well, I think in the business world, it means the same as in private life, because it, in, in our days, it's very hard to make a distinguish, right, between, between business and private life. Basically, resilient, to be resilient means to be able to bounce back, because re resilience comes from physics originally, and it means that if you have a mass and you have a stressor, it afterwards goes back into the original mass. So this is what it's all about. It's basically, basically about once you fall down, that you do get back up again. And it doesn't mean that you're not allowed to feel bad or you're not allowed to have any emotions such as fear or, or regret or, or any other emotions. You are allowed to have them, of course, you're human, right? But in the end, it always matters how do you get back up and how quickly you do get back up again. So this is basically the, the ability to actually cope with the stress, cope with change, and at the same time to get back up again and uh, be agile and flexible. So it doesn't mean you don't give up. It just means you just got back up. Exactly. Absolutely. Yes. You always do get back up, right? And in the end, if you, for example, I'm sure you know the quote of Michael Jordan when he explains how many times he had failed, how many times people expected him to actually win and he lost and he missed the shot. But yet in the end, he says, I failed over and over again, and that is why I succeed. And this is basically, this is a prime example for resilience. At what point should an entrepreneur, because this is a big question that a lot of entrepreneurs, let's just say, for example, um, let's say I own a restaurant business. Yes. And for some reason, it's not happening. I've been there for two, three, five, ten years, whatever the amount of time has been there, right? I'm making two to five thousand dollars every single month. I'm working there and I take that home. At what point do you say that you're not worth the five thousand, you're worth the fifteen, but this business is not gonna get you there? But he's on an understanding that if he gives this business up and goes transition into something else, that's aka giving up on this restaurant so how do you at what point do you differentiate between resiliency and having a, a iq well i i wouldn't necessarily i mean it doesn't it doesn't necessarily have to do with your iq it has to do with your eq it has to do with i mean business iq correct 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 exactly. yes yes I agree. emotional intelligence and your right. emotional intelligence is first of all being self-aware and being able to understand what is happening right now, being able to also regulate your emotions, right? Which is self-regulation, which is the second part. And then being able to self-motivate yourself. So those are the three first parts of emotional intelligence. Then comes, then it comes to empathy and social skills. But what's in, especially important in this case, for example, I would always look behind the curtain. What is, why is this person doing what he is doing what is his why what is his reason his purpose his drive why this person is doing it is it really because he wants to have a fantastic restaurant and and thrive from that is it because he only does it for money is it because he does it because he thinks his family wanted him to do it? let's say he inherited it or whatever the case so it's always important to look behind and see what is the reason why somebody is doing doing something what is the the why behind it and then at the same time if for example it, you know the question is always how do we define success this person could indeed be very 
comfortable and very happy with $5,000 a month, right? So it's a question of, is that person really satisfied or not? If you're really unsatisfied for a very long period of time, let's say you, you were mentioning five to 10 years, then at some point it is actually helpful to get help from, for example, from a coach and to find out, okay, where is my, where am I heading to and what can I actually do in order to use my resources better and maybe to shift one or two things and to be, to be a little bit more, uh, for example, to increase your marketing in a different way, etc. But it has to do with your emotional intelligence, being able to reflect, being able to look at your situation and saying, okay, what am I doing at this moment? Why am I doing this? And what is my next step? And why do I want to even get to this next step? And that indeed does require EQ or EI, emotional intelligence. I would say the emotional intelligence has to be you asking for advice. <laughs> I mean, the, the, would you say that this individual cannot determine that and you always need somebody else like a consultant coach mentor no, someone that you trust it not necessarily i mean in general it's clear that we do need other people we need our network but it doesn't mean that you necessarily need a coach but i was saying in this situation in this example if you do it for two, for 10 years and you're not able to move then sometimes a perspective from the outside is very very helpful but how does emotional intelligence how does it relate to to such a situation and it doesn't mean that for example if we're having a new, if we're emotionally intelligent then we are also thriving we're also having a growth mindset and a growth mindset means that you're able to make mistakes and learn out of the mistakes and it also means being able to actually ask for help at some point because if we are always thinking no i'm going to be perfect i must be perfect i must achieve it by myself on my own then you're not using all the resources that are around you so in exactly. the way it is it has to that's be hard yeah yeah i mean Doing it by yourself, but would you say if you do it by yourself, you don't get that fulfillment because you're doing it with other people? I mean, kind of, I don't know, maybe for some, I mean, Michael Jordan maybe couldn't have taken everybody else. No, actually, he could have been doing this in a teamwork. You're taking the entire team to the championship. Mm -hmm. Well, but if you hear Michael Jordan back in the days, if you heard him talk, he would always talk about his team. He would always give credit to his team. So in the end, if you have any, any big leader that you have, all, every leader has an advisor. And it's extremely, to me, I'm sure you do have a mentor as well, right? Correct. That supports you. I have, I have men, even several mentors because it's helpful to, to connect with other people and to see, hey, how, how do you see it from your perspective? Because oftentimes... When we are very focused on one thing, you know, our brain is very, can be very lazy and really just focus on that one thing. And of course it has to do with, the, with your mindset and with your beliefs, right? What you are saying to yourself, if you're saying to yourself, for example, I must be perfect, then this is your belief. And then your focus is on being perfect. And that, that way you're basically narrowing it down. So if at that point you are, reaching out for help for someone to support you and to to help you shift your focus help you shift your perspective that is actually a strength and i think that a lot of people are missing that because a lot of people are thinking i have to do it perfectly i have to do it really fast and i have to do it alone because otherwise it's not my success but in the end you are much more successful if you're using the resources around you so i i, I was watching i agree with that I was watching a few of your video. By the way, whoever is doing your Instagram, whenever you don't need them anymore or you fire them or you let them know, please let them. I have a job for them. They're doing a fantastic job. So I, I want to hire that person who's doing this stuff because I could definitely use them on my team, right? Good to know. You, Thank you. You, you, were, you. you had a video and we yes. were talking about being your own hero. Yes. That is a little bit of a tricky uh I didn't understand it. What does that mean to be your own hero? I was understanding that you become other people's hero by doing the right thing. I didn't know that you could become your own hero. Like, wouldn't that be like selfish? Like kind of. Ah, that's a very interesting 
very good. Maybe question, maybe you're I feeding your own ego, saying, "Yeah, I am the hero." That ah. kind of, I don't know. So we might need to explain that because someone like me might think like that. Yes, that's a very very good question. Actually, what I mean by that is that a lot of times. It's similar, actually. It does connect to what I was saying before. A lot of times, especially in a situation like now in a pandemic, we do get scared of thinking I can I can deal with my emotions, and a lot of times we do forget of what we actually need. And what I mean by that is that be your own superhero in that way. If you ask yourself in one year, thinking back, how do you want to tell someone else? how you dealt with this crisis, you want to be in one, in one year, say, you want to say, well, I did have difficulties, etc., but I did make it. I made it out of there, right? I grew from it. And this is what I mean by being your own superhero. It has nothing to do, and it's very interesting that you're saying that because a lot of people may understand it that way. It has nothing to do with egoism or being, too, being egocentric. It has something to do with being self-aware of what you need, of what you need right now in order to also be a hero for someone else. Because it's the same thing, you know, when you're sitting in an airplane and they're saying that the oxygen mask comes up, you first have to help yourself before you help someone else. And this is what resilience is in the end as well. So if you are in such, and it also has to do with the, the sentence, be kind to yourself. You know, in such a huge crisis, a lot of times we feel like we have to be perfect. We have to act perfectly and we're not allowed to feel sad, to feel a form of grief as well. You know, grieving back in the days before the pandemic. But if you understand that you can be and you shall be kind to yourself and be your superhero by taking care of yourself first, then you can be strong for others as well. So here's my other question. Well, just to follow up on that, I do want my daughter's hero to be me. Like, for sure. There is no doubt about that. Like, I want her to go to school and say, I just want to become like my dad. He's, <laughs> yeah. he's, like, there's definitely ego there. So make no mistake. We, we, <laughs> that part yeah. is going to stay the same. We're not changing that. Right? Because to me, it's very stupid. Why would you, why would anybody want their children or their surroundings be you know, having Superman or Spider-Man, all these stupid different things as their superheroes. Why can't it be their own parents? Why can't they look up to the people that are next to you? Why can't her hero be the grandparent or, or the grandpa or, or the cousin or the nephew or the uncles or the aunts? Why do we got to look for somebody else on a TV show that's completely pure man-made? Like, why we got to be able to do that? That's why I think a lot of parents... You know, they definitely need to understand why they need to do good or why they need to strive to have that growth because that's what the next generation is looking at. And yes. if they don't have a role model, they will find one. It just won't be Absolutely. you because you're not winning in your life. So yes. I think there is pressure. And yeah. this is one of those things that I tell people that if you can't take the pressure, then why don't you have kids? Like yeah. these are these are serious conversations. Like, do you understand that you are responsible for livelihood of somebody else? And I don't mean putting food on the table or the roof. That I'm pretty sure most people should be able to do it. You know, really easy. You may not be living in Beverly Hills. You may not be living in the best part of Germany, but you will at least provide. But the other part of it is, you could be making fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. And still be a superhero. You don't have to make 10 million to become a superhero. Absolutely, yeah. And especially right now during this crisis, that one thing is for sure, your children will not so much remember what exactly happened. They will remember how you made them feel. And this is not only when it comes to children. It's also when it comes to leadership, for example. If you have a team, if you're leading a team, your team will remember how you made them feel. Your partner, your, 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 um, your wife or, or my husband will remember how I made them feel. This is something that does enter our system. So it's so, so important to, to take care. And this is what I'm saying. This is why it's so important to take care of yourself because only if you're grounded, if you, if you can accept and in a way love yourself, 
then you can actually give that love to someone else or give that acceptance to someone else or that the, or the empathy to someone else. So, okay. When you say you have to ground yourself, does that mean that you need to know who you are? Is that what, 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 what translates into? It, you do, yes. And I think in these times, you do realize it's, it's a wonderful time in order to get to know who you are. You may have thought you know who you are, but in, in such a crisis, you really know, you, you get to know, or you are able to get to know your fears, for example, right? Or, or, or anything that you, you're doubtful about or that you, pan, you may be panicking about. That is a start of yourself. That Liv, you I, I'm not afraid of anything. I'm only afraid of my wife. That's it. There's no fear <laughs> about <laughs> I don't have any fears. Those things are gone a long time ago. Only fear I got is my wife. That's it. Everything else I got. Why are you laughing? Why is it every time I tell another female, they laugh at that? Why is that the case? Are you talking to my wife? No, I'm not talking to your wife, but I could imagine that she's quite a, um, a self-confident lady, if you're saying that, and I love that. Oh, you better believe it. I call it more like a dictatorship household. But you know, you I might call it democracy. Most men would probably say that. I could imagine that most men would say that about their wives. But you want to know something? To me, is like it's the division of tasks and duties within mm -hmm. a household. Mm -hmm. And to me, it doesn't mean men or women or wife or husband or whatever. It's somebody that's got better skills in that area that should be in charge. Because if you let that be the person who doesn't have enough skills in that role, then the next generation is copying it. Like, it's so funny that I brought this up is that I was watching a documentary about all these different, uh, different cats, especially cheetahs. And, and he talked about that the alpha female typically trains all the babies in hunting. Mm -hmm. because males are not as good as the females right. in hunting and be able to teach other, mm -hmm. uh, other new siblings new, the, 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 the whole entire concept. So to me, it's like, okay, that doesn't mean male or female or husband or wife. It's just that this individual is better at this. So in order for us to get a better results in the future mm -hmm. for, our own, for our own entire society, you would want the best person to be training the next generation so that they could get those traits. So to me, it's like a lot of, a lot of guys, you know, they don't, they don't comprehend it like that. I let my wife handle most of the stuff on that side because she's better at it. Well, I think so it all comes you... down. I think it all comes down to communication and to structure, right? I mean, if you under, if you mutually agree on who's doing what, and if you actually talk freely and openly about it, then, then you do have a very healthy relationship in when, when it comes to that. And I think it's us people, especially like if you take this the situation right now, we really do need structure and we really need to, to communicate at the same time. So I think a lot of relationships are at this moment, for example, are being tested because this, they already had their life before and now they have to restructure the, their own relationship in b being at home, for example. Viv, and nobody, nobody lived with their wives. Nobody lived with their wives 24-7. <laughs> well, there are some people. <laughs> but the other way You don't have happens, that. So. so you were outside working you eight, nine hours and you were coming for a couple of hours. So 24 hours, you really are putting a lot of shit. You need a lot of resiliency. I think you should do a training on that. All the husbands need resiliency to survive during the pandemic, especially right now, or else the divorce rates the are going to skyrocket. And the other way around. <laughs> I don't know about that, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is like that. But here is here is the beauty the beauty of it is that to me is. I, I look at the negative side, but I try to get a, a, a learning lesson out of it or a positive outcome. If even it ends up being in divorce, in my opinion, personal opinion, that is the best thing that could happen with you because why would you want to delay that? Mm -hmm. If you know this structure is not working, that's the same thing with our business, right? This structure is not working, so the only way to do it is to not break it down, but kind of like dissolve it. Say, I love you. I think you should live with somebody else. If you love me, 
then we shouldn't have these conversations because it's not healthy for both. So when you have this mutual understanding, why would you want to delay five years? Why would you want to delay 10 years? Why would you want to wait till you're 75 and then realize this is not my partner? I lived 20, 30, 40 years. Now you're living with regret. Now it's going to need, now it's going to need more self-development to get out of the regret first. Yes. Well, I think this time really is like a magnifying glass or like a, like a mirror, you know, not only when it comes to relationships, but also to yourself, you know, you're looking in the mirror and, and with, with all your emotions uh, that are combined or that are, that are related to this situation. So yes, and I think no matter uh, what crisis in the end happens, you, you can always learn from it. It may not feel like it in that moment because i could imagine maybe some people are watching this and are really in a terrible situation and are very very sad or angry so you may not see that right now but just like steve jobs said you can't connect the dot looking forwards and you can only connect them looking backwards right so in the end it does make sense and and i think i completely agree that we can always learn something out of it we can always thrive from a crisis maybe not right away but but certainly. Well, no it definitely some lessons take time before it comes my last two questions for you what's yes. your favorite uh, self-development book oh my goodness that's a very tough one well of course i love mindset from dr carol dweck i can highly recommend it and i do have to mention two others i have to mention search inside yourself from chad meng tang who he, who's the creator of the mindfulness program at Google. And um, currently there's a new book, it's called Emotional Agility from Dr. Susan David. She is fantastic. She, she looks at it from a different perspective in terms of how to manage with your emotions. So um, I, those are my, those three if, are my favorites. <laughs> if, 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 if I want to start on self-development path and I don't know where to start, what would be the one tip that you could give us that potentially could help individuals? The one tip? Did one tip. Like let's, say, let's say there's a lot of, what I see right now is I see a lot of people transitioning from nine to five or they had a previous uh, you know, career. They yeah. might be thinking that they might want to start their own gig, side hustle, business, career, whatever. In that process, What's yes. the one tip that you think people can use, especially if they want to become a business owner or entrepreneur? Well, to me, uh, to be very honest, it's all about what are your strengths and what do you live for? What is your mission? Like, what do you really, what really fulfills you? And you can, for example, you, you could make an analysis. You could make an analysis on what you have been doing, all your tasks. Let's say that, for example, you've been, um, you've been an accountant and what are your tasks or you've been a CEO or you've been, you've been a manager or you've been uh, no matter what situation, what job and find out, extract all the parts that where you were really thriving, where you really, really were successful and also make another list of what are other things that when you do them, you can really see that all your energy is completely at your highest level. So that may be a, a situation or that might be a technique and a tip on how to extract what you really are passionate for. And then, of course, as I was saying in the beginning, so it kind of closes the loop and the circle. Of course, to me, it's key to find out if, who is in your network and who is either at a state of mind or at a position, no matter whether it's self-employed or employed, that you really would love or that you are interested in and connect with these people and exchange with these people. This is what I did in the beginning of my, of my, uh, of being self-employed that I was talking to people, getting advice on how did you get there? And by talking, by having these conversations or by, you know, finding, listening to podcasts of people that inspire you, for example, or books like you were just mentioning from that, you will get new ideas. But in the end, it all comes, uh, comes back to what we were saying in the beginning as well of your mindset and having a growth mindset and really working on your self-awareness and working on being able to say, okay, I'm going to give it a try. And if I fall, I will get back up again. No, well, self-development is hard work. And it, and work. it takes work. <laughs> That's why most people don't do it. It's yes. not easy. 
and I, and I hear a lot of gurus and, and, and a lot of coaches, a lot of mentors, they say, oh, it's simple. Is it? No, it's not. I'd rather no. you tell me the truth. It takes work. Yeah. I got a bunch of garbage in my mind, in, in, in my brain, or, you know, in my mind, and I got to get rid of that. That takes work. It's just like if you got to go do, you know, spring cleaning in your house, or if you got a garage full of stuff for five years, that's a lot of hard work. It might take you a couple of days. You know, you might need to do something. So to me, it's like I hate it when people make it sound so simple and easy, and it kind of deceives well, You know, you're not telling the truth. You're not being authentic. It takes a lot. I'm a slow learner. And for yeah. me to finish a book, it's a lot of work. Yeah. It's like really pushing myself to really like, sometimes like I don't, I'm resisting myself. So to me, it's like, it's a lot of work. If you're not willing to do it, you're not going to achieve it. So you got to. Yeah. And take gotta, it day by day also, right? Take it day by day. Take it step by step. This is one of my philosophies when I want to reach a goal. It's just like when you climb the mountain. If you look up at the mountain the entire time while you're climbing up, you're not going to be motivated to get there. So just no. focus on one step. Do one thing, one little thing at a time. Because this, the personal development, like you're saying, the industry is humongous. And we may we feel completely overwhelmed by, oh my God, what am I going to do? Who am I going to get inspired by? What do I, you know, what technique is good for me? Too many books, too much. It's, you know, we're living in an over overload of what we can actually do so take take a step back and take one step at a time and not not be so overwhelmed and yes i absolutely agree with you it is work it does take time and that's wonderful because during that time you do grow and you get to know yourself better but um, yeah you broke day -day. you broke my heart i thought you were going to say thinking go rich is your favorite book but you know you, you took three stabs at my heart so I might need to go, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I might need a good coffee after this. And, you know, German people, man, you guys are so brutal. You just give it to me. You didn't even, you didn't even, work, you weren't even nice about it, like saying, you know, thinking go maybe, and then you're like, mm -hmm, three, that's it. And nothing about thinking goes, Damn. Oh, oh my I'm, God. Sorry. I'm sure you will, I'm sure you will still be able to sleep tonight. It's a great hope. <laughs> <laughs> listen thank you so much for being with us um keep thank up the good work on your ig I, I see a lot of good videos i see i, I love the ig tvs that you're putting out there hopefully thank how can people find you you can find me at um, instagram at vivian underscore divert with uh, ue i think you can see it here on the line you can find me on Facebook. You can find me on LinkedIn. You can send me an email, info at viviandiver.com. Viviandiver.com is my website. And I'm happy if you follow me on Instagram. And, um, yeah. <laughs> awesome. You're the best. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Hopefully, we can do more. Yes. That would be my pleasure. Take you care of You got to talk to you soon. Bye-bye. And live your life. You got to talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care.